The Siege of Damaj Mumtaz Darul Hadith was a Sunni educational institute in the village of Damaj in North Yemen. Darul Hadith offered Islamic studies according to the Salafi Minhaj. The Salafi Minhaj, or methodology, is a strictly orthodox understanding of Islam. Salafis, those who follow this methodology, view other expressions of Islam as unorthodox at best or heretical at worst. The word Salafi means predecessor and it refers to the first three generations of Muslims as Salafi Salihun or the righteous predecessors. Salafis believe the righteous predecessors were the best of all Muslims. Non-Salafis often view them as strict, inflexible, and intolerable of others, even other Sunni Muslims. The modern Salafi movement was founded by Muhammad Abdul Wahab, the religious advisor of Ibn Saud, the founder of the Saudi royal family. Opponents of the Salafis often call them Wahhabis after Abdul Wahab. Sheikh Mukbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi was a Yemeni man from Damaj in northern Yemen. He was born into a Zaydi family but studied Islam at the University of Medina in Saudi Arabia. By the time he graduated, Sheikh Mukbil had converted to Sunni Islam and was a staunch Salafi. He returned to his home country of Yemen and established Darul Hadith in the late 1980s. Throughout the 1990s, as the Salafi Minhaj spread outside Arabia, Darul Hadith became a popular destination for young Salafi students. Darul Hadith did not give out certificates or degrees. Students who attended there did not live in fancy dormitories nor attend lavish graduation ceremonies. Students attending Darul Hadith were choosing a difficult life. They were giving up the comforts of home to study Islam in one of the harshest environments on the planet. As Darul Hadith grew, so did the community around it. Despite the rough lifestyle, the school attracted thousands of students from all over the world. Young men from North America, Europe, Africa, and Asia came to Damaj to live an authentic Salafi life, and they often brought their wives and children with them. By the early 2000s, Damaj had become a purely Salafi village in the middle of Zaydi Shia territory. The men wore long thobes and full beards with their izar wraps well above their ankles. The women wore all black, complete with black gloves and the traditional niqab veil. Even though Salafis consider the Shias to be heretics, there was little conflict between the residents of Damaj and their Zaydi neighbors. But all of this changed when the Houthis began to exert their power. While the world was focused on the Arab Spring protests in Sana'a, no one paid attention to the Houthis as they strengthened their hold in northern Yemen. In October 2011, the Houthis accused Darul Hadith of being a front for ACAP and of smuggling in weapons and fighters. They cut off all roads to Damaj and laid siege to the town for nearly two months. Houthi snipers and artillery holed up in the surrounding mountains held the city hostage. Finally, in December 2011, the local tribes negotiated a truce with the Houthis. The Houthis withdrew and there was relative peace in Damaj for two years. Then, in October 2013, while President Hadi was focused on fighting ACAP and communists in the southern Yemen, the Houthis again accused Darul Hadith of bringing in fighters and weapons. Darul Hadith insisted they were only students, but the Houthis did not believe them. Once again, Damaj was under siege, only this time, the Houthis were stronger and the government was weaker. As bad as the siege of 2011 was, this one was worse. Houthi artillery bombarded Damaj with heavy shelling. Venturing outside became a gamble with death as Houthi snipers targeted men, women, and children. Even the local mosques were not safe as the Houthis deliberately targeted congregants during Friday prayers. Within the first month of the siege, 30 people had been killed in Damaj with another 100 injured. The local governor, a Houthi sympathizer, publicly denied there was any siege and that the Houthis were not involved. That same day, an old man and a six-year-old boy were killed by snipers. A presidential committee came from the capital to inspect the situation. The shelling stopped while the committee was in Damaj, but as soon as they left, resumed with even more intensity. 
The siege dragged on into November 2013 with no end in sight. With the roads into and out of the city blocked off, the people of Damaj suffered from a lack of food and medicine. Pregnant women went into labor with no trained medical staff. The young, sick, and the elderly were easy victims. The Red Cross tried negotiating with the Houthis to gain access but were always denied. When a second presidential committee came to visit, the Houthis did not even bother to stop shelling. They just pointed their guns to a different part of the village. Another month went by and nothing changed. The local tribes tried to fight the Houthis but were always outgunned. The Houthis even attacked a local tribal council that was trying to find a peaceful solution. Throughout all of this, men, women, and children were killed by snipers, artillery fire, sickness, and crumbling debris. Finally, in early January 2014, after 90 days under siege, the Houthis allowed the Red Cross to evacuate 35 injured students. This was the first sign that a ceasefire was in the works. On January 11th, the government struck an agreement with the Houthis to relocate all of the Salafis from Damaj. Sheikh Yahya al Hajuri, the dean of Dar al Hadith, agreed to the terms. The Salafis were given four days to leave and they could only take what they could carry with them. The government and local tribes provided hundreds of trucks and buses to transport the nearly 10,000 residents of Damaj. Throughout the siege, over 800 people were killed.